now that I have some walls in there, I want to talk to you about modifying the wall. There are several methods of modifying walls. You can change the type of walls using the type selector in the modifying the properties. Use controls and shape handles to modify the length of the wall and the orientation and use temporary dimensions and permanent dimensions to change the location or length of the wall in the 2D or 3D as uh, you can see right here. Okay, so the temporary dimension here is this blue dimension. The regular dimensions will carry a harder black line as a permanent dimension. So I have some of these live walls right here. As you notice, I select one of them. You get these temporary dimensions that pop up all over the place that Revit auto generates for you. Okay, and then if you look at this here, this is a drag wall end, this is a grip. And then you get these shape handles only when you're in the 3D, as you can see here, and then you can affect their height, okay? Now, that will only populate if you have a top constraint as an unconnected. If you do not have it, if you have it set to a level, you will not get to use that shape handle in the 3D, okay? Um, if you notice right here, this is the orientation uh, of the wall. So if I should click it, you notice that it populates onto the other side. Now, we are interested in this because sometimes we have walls that contain more than just one material. So if I should put on, say, this wall, it's very, very complex. It has lots and lots of different materials on it. And because I'm in the course view right now, you're not seeing any of what that wall actually looks like in its different pieces like you see here in the type properties. So if I go into a medium or fine, then now you get to see all those patterns that show up for me. So because this particular wall is a CMU, this stud, if you will, is right here, and it is made up of something called a CMU, concrete masonry unit. In some cases, a wall might have wood, might have concrete, it might have metal as its main base, and then we add on the extra materials either on the inside of the, of the building or the exterior of the building. So in this case right here, I most likely would like to keep my, uh, look, my stud always in the same place. And maybe let's say for example, that my wall came in like this. Well, this is the exterior of the wall. Let me get you some color to kind of help illustrate that just a little bit more, okay? Notice that there's CMU, as I'd said, and there's a brick finish, there's an air gap, and then there's something else, probably like some insulation here. Um, so I didn't intend for this to happen because this is a, some sort of room. I'd rather that be on the outside, but notice what happens when I flip it. Because this wall drag in is right here, it also happens to land on our location line as well. So we can use it as a marker to tell what's gonna happen. Watch what happens when I rotate it actually flips the entire wall about the center of the wall entirely. So let me use a reference line in here to illustrate this just a little bit more. If I put this on the face of this stud here, and I'm just gonna yank my reference line out just a little bit more, and then I'm gonna copy it, the reference line over to the opposite face of our CMU, okay? That way, when I flip this, you'll, you'll see the illustration of what actually happens, all right? So when I hit this flip sh uh, wall orientation, orientation handles, look what happens. It rotated it against the in center of the entire wall because it's at wall center line. So that's not ideal because now my wall has shifted out and it's not where I had it originally and my dimensions have now changed. So let's flip that back. And a better way to deal with this is to change what way that it actually orients itself. So we would say that, um, let's go with finish face, uh, or say core face exterior. So the dot does stay where it is coincidentally. However, if I have this now in the wrong orientation, watch what happens when I flip it. It rotates about that face, right? That becomes my new face of rotation, point of rotation. So um, if I had this in uh, the incorrect location and I wanted the wall to remain where it was without uh, moving this core into the wrong place, what I'd want to do is I would want to say the center of core, okay? 
core center line is right here. So now notice where the dot went. The dot now is between this line and this line because this is the core of the wall. So what will happen if I flip this is all this exterior material is going to flip to the outside and all this interior material will go to the opposite side and the core will stay put. Here we are. And as I predicted, it stayed where it was supposed to be. So that's kind of the gist of why we might think about those. Also, um, if I have a different wall type, so if I switch this guy out to say, um, right now, the center of that core, if I go into its structure of it, it says that it's seven and five eighths inch thick, right? Well, what happens if I switch this guy to a four inch wall right now? So I select that wall, go over here, and I change it out to a four inch wall. Let's see, I don't have any, uh, let's go five, okay? Notice that it stayed where it was and it shrank it on both sides. However, that wasn't what I really wanted to happen. Let me go to the thin line to show that a little bit better to you. I'd rather of uh, it stayed on one of these lines, right? Because I can't afford to uh, lose any space on the interior of wherever it was. I can, however, do that on my exterior. So what I would want to do is go ahead and go back in action, right? Get my same wall back, change the wall's location line, and we'll say core face exterior. See where the dot is? Now when I change out my stud to something smaller, one side of the stud will stay against that line while the other side is what shrinks and the other pieces disappear, okay? See that? All right, so that's the best way you wanna, you wanna really pay attention to those and plan that kind of stuff because you could end up uh, flipping things, losing things where you did not intend that to happen, all right? So dragging wall ends is as simple as grabbing this line and pulling it. Um, however, I do not recommend that you use that action to be lengthening walls or shortening walls. Um, if you want to go ahead and shorten a wall, let's say that this was supposed to make a 90 degree here, maybe this wall is an incorrect wall. Maybe this wall is supposed to be some uh, generic six inch wall. And let's say that this wall might have been generic six. Also notice that that went to the way I wanted it to. And this says core face exterior. I most likely want to have this guy be the same exact thing. All right. And then what I'd like to do is I want to make a 90 degree turn here. The way to do that is trimming the corner. You click here on what you want to keep, click here. Notice the dash blue line, cyan is giving me a uh, preview of what's going to happen, meaning it's going to chop off that little part, okay? So there it goes. So it's I keep, I keep is how I trim, all right? So that's the best way to do that. Um, if you want to change the wall's orientation, I've showed you that uh, by using this here to flip it. Now that one rotated about its location line. It always does, okay? And then these are your temporary dimensions. You can activate them by using this little icon right here. It looks like a tiny dimension. If you select it, it then gives you a real dimension. However, I'm gonna undo that. You do not need that dimension to be real in order to use it to do some work for yourself, okay? So if I meant for this wall not to be seven foot three from the center of it to the outside edge of that wall right there, I could then select what I wanted to move, click into the dimension, and type in seven if I meant that to be my number, okay? All right, so anything else that you want to find out about a wall, if you select it, it shows up here within your properties panel. Uh, let me just drag out our properties to be a little bit wider so this is more readable. It tells you about the location, the base that level that it's actually on. And so in this case, it says its top constraint is level two, so it's growing from level one and connecting itself and stopping at level two. And it says here that it is a total of 10 feet and that's generated from the distance between the two levels, level one and level two, all right? You can also find out some more information if you had more offsets from the top of it. You could find out if there's some extension information. Extension information is if you're trying to pass materials past uh, a level that might be on like say level two above and the material in the exterior needs to come down but the stud needs to stay where it is that would become active and you could do that through other ways. And you could specify if it's room bounding, if there's a calculation it needs. And then also there's an option here to make that wall structural if you felt like it. it gives us some information about the total length of this wall and the area that it consumes and the volume that it's consuming as well. And if there was more image uh, that you wanted to attach here, you could. 
um, throw that into a schedule. And there's some comments if you needed to put that in and then the mark. So something about this panel here is that this information is per each wall that you place. Now, notice that these are basic wall generic six inches. If I go to edit type, I am now going to affect every single generic six inch basic wall, all right? In here, I affect just the individual. In here, it's a global, it's the entire project, whatever I change in here. So if I should change or add materials or change its thickness, it will affect every single one of these walls in the entire project at one time, okay? So the information that can be found in here is the way that it actually wraps around corners. Um, you can change its functionality from exterior to interior. Um, there's some foundation, retaining core shafts, things like that. And that's more of a scheduling thing. You can change the way it looks graphically if you like right here. You can change uh, some of its information about it, how rough the material is and what its absorption rate is if you knew what it was. Um, the assembly codes that you might find in the manuals, things like that. And so that's kind of the basics of that.